Well hello everybody and welcome to the September vlog for agricology here at Dalesford Farm. My name is Richard Smith uh, and I'm the farm manager here. As you'll know, previous viewers to the vlog will know that I get quite excited about samphoid and it's been a tremendous addition to our cropping and system here at Dalesford. This year, as I'm sure it's been the same on your farms, it's been you know, a terribly hard year, the driest year for 40 years, and so it's been a real test of the drought resistance of this crop. Grass yields have been down, so have uh, cereal crops, etc, etc. Now we actually had quite a pleasant spring, if you'll remember, and this year we decided to do analysis of a juvenile crop of samphoin each week until mowing. The first cut in this field was back on May the 14th, and it was a beautiful crop of samphoin. But for the three weeks before that, we took an analysis of the protein content of the crop, and I found that it dropped by about 2% each week. So right at the end of April, it an analyzed at 22% protein with an ME of about 11 on the score sheet, which is you know really, really good. And then I noticed that it dropped by 2% the following week and 2% the week after. The analysis of our first cut silage from this samphoin was 17% protein with an ME of between 10 and a half and 11. Again, acceptable. We then took a second cut in July and the analysis had dropped then, so we were back down to 14% protein with an ME of about 10 and a half, 10, 10 and a half. And we've just taken a third cut of which we don't have an analysis for, and I don't expect it to be any better than that. As far as volume and quantity from this field, we took around that sort of nine, 10 tons an acre, so just under 25 tons to the hectare of fresh weight silage from here in the mid-May, and then the two subsequent cuts have yielded about eight tons. I'd say that's down a little because of the drought, but of all the crops we grow, this had managed to hang on um, a, a better than anything. It's a very deep-rooted, tap-rooted plant, and it got, got down into some moisture, and so it wasn't um, a disaster by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm very glad to have had samphoin in the rotation this year to fill the pits up. Um, what we'll do now is allow this just to freshen up, uh, it'll recover quite well, hopefully we've at last had some moisture. Um, so hopefully this will recover quite well, and then what we'll do is we'll flick lambs over it and graze lambs. It really is rocket fuel for fattening uh, ruminant stomachs. The big trick is not to overgraze it. You know, it's a crown-grown plant. Once you've chewed that crown out at soil level, you've lost the plant forever. So it's just a case of letting it freshen up and flick them over it. Um, later on, when the lambs are up here, and I'll come back and show you them grazing, we can get fattening lambs doing th uh, something like 300 grams a day live weight gain. And in my business, where we're looking to put lambs consistently uh, into our business every week, we can literally put groups of lambs on here and know that they're going to perform at a certain rate. So Samphoin has been brilliant. Even in this dry year, I'm not disappointed with it. And had it been um, a normal summer where we had an amount of moisture, I'm sure the yields would have been considerably higher. But I look forward to coming back and show you even more about Samphoin over the next months. Thanks very much. Have a great month.